Hi, and welcome to Frazzlecast. Climb aboard the gnome train. Woo! Chugga, 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 woo! Please make sure to keep your limbs and experimental instruments inside the train at all times. And now, on with the show. A podcast by a Blizzard fan gnome about World of Warcraft and geeky stuff. I promise you, they do talk about the world of Warcraft. They just go off the rails sometimes. So stay a while and listen, as I'm Frasley, and I am joined by Gin of Morally Great Podcast. So perfect for listening to on your new iPod Touch that Apple just released. And adding to the pandemonium tonight, I have the curator of Dungeon Lore, Ally of Dungeon Fables and All Things Azeroth. And bringing us the cookies, the latest insights from Kyorog, and leading us to battle and trivia, we have Lady Emma. Hi, everyone. I have luck cookies. Yup. Want some? Absolutely. (laughs) On this episode, we get to know Gin better, hear about their podcast, look into Kyorog's site, play some trivia, and more. But before we get into that, just like Steve Jobs, one more thing. I've got a voicemail from Fear, so have no fear. This is amazing. Oh, boy. Hey, Frasley, this is Fear calling in to leave a message for my boy, Jen. Hey, Jen, we just got done recording. Just want to let you know I told Frasley I'd keep this shit pretty clean. I just want to tell you, man, I appreciate everything you've done on this show, all the work you put in, all the editing, all the audio kinks you've worked out, all the sounders you put in, all the time that you've put into this uh, little show that we call Morally Gray. And uh, I just want to thank you for taking me on the uh, show with you, brother, and bringing me along on this adventure. I appreciate it, man. I know you probably thought I'd get in here and be calling you a D-face or something like that. But, nah, I just want to tell you, bro, I appreciate everything you've done, and I appreciate you doing this show and the editing, the show notes, the audio, all the stuff, and bringing me along on this journey, brother. I do appreciate it. Anyway, y'all take care. Enjoy the show. Enjoy the interview. Have a good one from Fear. Take it easy. Aww. Yeah, this, uh, that warmed my heart when I got that. I was like, oh, that yeah. is amazing. He likes the word appreciate, if you hadn't if you didn't notice. Just, <laughs> I appreciate so, that. Aww. So happy. He likes that. He likes it a lot. <laughs> In Fear, just so you know, while uh, you were doing the voicemail, Gen was drinking. That was true. <laughs> That was really sweet, Fear. That's awesome. You know what else is is amazing and sweet? The fact that Epic Insanity made a bumper for us that I love to play every episode. So, Epic Insanity, what time is it? It's time to go around the table. Great idea. So, what have you been up to recently? We'll start with Gin. And did you see Gin? I made your color gray on the dock. Yeah, because it's more morally. Yep. Morally gray. <laughs> right. So, what am I up to? Um, well, I'm going to do a little little thing and say that well i had a good day yesterday because i went and saw the movie aladdin Ooh, Ooh. it was really good was um, it? yeah i really awesome. liked it i feel like frasley and i will have some disagreement on the quality and on the possibility of the movie but yeah that's really what i've been up to because most of my free time is spent goofing off uh in wow and doing podcast bs I mean, you, you're, you're kind of like a genie of podcasting. You, you you bring the lore into our ears magically every week. And in fact, I'm betting that between the time of this recording and the next time this goes out, there'll be another morally great podcast into our ears. Yeah, there will be. Absolutely. Tomorrow, as we're recording. The Aladdin. It was great. But why? That was my only question. I love the original. I mean, I thought Will Smith did this. It was amazing. <laughs> Do you think one was better than the other one? Well, if I had to really like gun to my head, tell you which one was better, I'm going to go with the original. Uh, only because it's hard to beat the original. Like that, that was like, that's like you're saying, can you beat perfection? Uh, yeah. I think you can. But I really appreciate it. And if anyone has not seen it that doesn't appreciate spoilers, I'm, I'm not going to spoil really anything. But if you really avoid this stuff, just plug your ears and go la 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 for like two seconds. Gadzook, spoiler warning. Take my headphone off. Let me know when I can come back. They added a new character that was not in the original. And let's just say Jasmine has a lot more to do in this one. I really liked the fact that 
mean, she got her own musical number and everything. It was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I liked the additional character and also the fact that they mentioned Jasmine's mother. I, I liked that because that, oh, there was a lot of additions. And I'd say I, I loved the empowerment. I liked that part. And I thought that was an interesting take on it. And even culturally, some of the stuff that happened, I don't think we could have done even uh, 20 years ago because I think Aladdin's over 20 yeah. years old. Yeah, it's 20 years, I think, this year. I think it came out in 99. Hey, Emma, you can put your headphones back on now. <laughs> I'm sure she is. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, okay, Frazier. I'm back. Welcome back. Oh, Emma, so uh, <laughs> now that you have your headphones back on, what have you been up to? Super, super fi- busy. My raid team finally got Gina down on Heroic. Yay. Congrats. Nice. I'm still so, working on that. We are now trying to work on Heroic, the other raid, the two boss Crucible raid. Storm. That one's yeah. rough. That's rough. The first boss is really rough. Normal. Yeah. Second boss sucks if you're trying to do the achievement. Because that one, there, there, there's a big giant eye in the back of the room. When it's open, you cannot move. Wherever your tune is, it has to stay there. Ooh, and tricky. Yeah, and see, things go on the bottom of your ground. And yeah, bad things. So it's basically, it's a personal achievement. So it does not the whole raid has to do it, thank God. So if you have that on farm, Maybe you can pick one person that does nothing um, and then rotate it so everyone can get the achievement one at a time. Because, yeah, it's it's a pain. But that boss, other than that achievement, it's we find it's easier. Well, normal anyways. We haven't done heroic yet. So we did the heroic one yesterday. So for the full three hours of our raid, we couldn't get it down. And that's only because uh, we're, we're still working out. Um, little technical issues like um, the rotation of the interrupts. But I'm pretty sure once we get the interrupts underway and controlled, the boss is going to go down no problem. I have started playing my Pokemon Let's Go again. Nice. I still only have four gym badges because I'm one of those weird people that collect all the Pokemon before moving on to the next gym. Well, you got to catch them all. So, I mean. Exactly. Yeah. But I'm also. It is in the lyrics of the song. Uh, exactly. <laughs> but it's bad because I'm getting the males and female versions of both. You're really collecting them all. And then I have to have one of each level or uh, evolve form. Are you trying to make sure you can breed while you're moving <laughs> and something like that? Is that what's good? You need to make well, sure you there's get your no eggs? breeding in this game. There's no what? breeding. It's just it's just because it's the original red and blue slash green is the original one of that be revamped. So there's no breeding. There's no IV training, nothing. I'm just one of those weird people that has to do everything. And yeah, so it takes me for a while. There's no 99 rare candies that you feed your Pokemon and check your IVs and then turn the game off. I don't do the rare candies because it makes them weak. Uh, yeah. yeah, but there's no cheat for that where you go up. Oh, no, you talk to the guy who teaches you how to catch a Pokemon. Then you go up and down the side of Seafoam Island and the sixth item in your bag slot. You make sure it's rare candies. And then when the missing number comes, you have 120 rare candies. No, none of that. Okay. (laughs) Yes, I am an avid Pokemon person. Um, And then my nephew is bugging me because I haven't played my Ultra Moon for a while. Because he wants to, uh, there's certain Pokemon he still has difficulty catching, and I haven't caught them for him. So he's upset that I haven't caught them for him yet. Aww. Yeah. Apparently, I have to go see Pikachu Detective this weekend with him, because he was, like, really upset that we haven't seen it yet, and we don't know how much longer he's going to be in theaters. I mean, it's a mystery. I've seen it already, but I haven't told him that, because I don't want to hurt his feelings, because I want yeah. to make sure I wanted to see it. Still visiting my Opa every Tuesday and make him fresh muffins. I think this Monday I'm going to be doing a day of baking muffins so I can store them in the freezer. He thinks they're fresh every single time I come over. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> <laughs> my, my little kitty is not so little anymore. Um, you can hear him in the background with the bell and the, the two cats are playing somewhere. I did squirt day. I spent the whole day. I think there's only like five hours, maybe six hours. I did not do squirt day and that's because i was sleeping how dare you sleep i know on yeah. squirt day i know and <laughs> i ran out of time i got up early and i ran out of time i only had 16 pets left to do to level 25 and if i got up like half an hour an hour earlier i could have done it and then i went on the auction house yesterday while i was waiting for a raid and i found some really cheap pets 
that I didn't have and I bought them. It's the allure of the shinies. Yes. Yeah. Well, it doesn't help that I have the add on all things and and oh, then I have a, yeah. yeah. And then I have another add on that puts like a little movable star thing in the corner of stuff that I haven't learned yet. So I'm going through the auction house and seeing all these pets for like 50 gold and they're from the island uh, island thingamajig. Expeditions. Yeah, which I never do. So I'm, I'm having a hard time collecting these pets. So I just started buying them. So I, I did that and now I'm up to 50 pets that now I need to level to 25. So next court day, October. Yeah. Yes, October 21st. So you heard it right from here. Uh, and don't sleep on October 21st. So make sure to sleep on October 20th. That way yeah. so you can be up all day. Yeah, so October 21st is Squirt Day plus the Pet Battle Bonus Week, which is really important because it only takes two battles to level it from 1 to 25. If you do it on other Squirt Days, it still takes about seven battles. Yes, I did the calculations. I need help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've just been all over the place. I've actually been driving myself. Good job. Nice. Yeah. And I also got a year older. Happy late birthday. Thank you. So much. I know there's more, but my mind's going blank. I know there's somebody whose mind's not blank, though. <laughs> you sure about that, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Ali, what have you been up to? What have I been up to? I got a chance last week and then a little bit this morning to check out the classic beta just as you know stress testing i mean i started in bc so some of the things were you know still from vanilla in bc and it was kind of fun to experience some of that again and remember certain things i'd forgotten or redo things that i remembered and then watch everyone else is there complaining about them because they, they don't know that we can't multi-tap mobs yeah <laughs> legion because <laughs> I think yeah. only quest mobs were changed in cat or miss something like that. Yeah. So that was kind of fun to watch. And I you know, had, had a good time reliving that. I know like when classic comes out, I'll dabble. I don't have enough game time to really dive into it, but I'll play once in a while. But that was really, it was cool to see and I get a chance to do that. And I'll, you know, keep doing it as long as they keep giving me the stress test beta for it. I worked on some achievements for Old Deer nice. with uh, the Rubber Chicken Coalition raid in CTR. So that was pretty cool. We didn't do the last two. They were a little they were a little, little tricky, a little, little rough. But it was still a lot of fun. And worked a little more on my Iron Man too. And he's only 15. I haven't really had much of a chance to dive in again. But hopefully this week, lots of time in Botanica for my next episode. And this weekend, we'll bring lots of time in Booty Bay for the next episode. And yeah, just getting to kind of just chill and relax finally and enjoy the game because my overtime is over, which is awesome. Yeah. And I know Emma Mark mentioned Detective Pichu. I watched that. Was that last weekend? Weekend before? Watched it recently. It was pretty good. And this upcoming weekend is, like I said in pre-show, it was my fifth anniversary with my husband. So we're going to go hang out and do things and... I don't know at all yet, but it's going to be fun. So really the main thing right now is overtime is over. So I don't feel like I'm a dead brain <laughs> and I can actually game and put more energy into my show and whatever else I'm doing. So that's an amazing thing. And I'm, I'm impressed that you got those, those podcasts out with the overtime. I mean, that takes commitment. That takes a lot of losing sleep and no gaming. Like I, during that month between some personal things going on in you know, real life and the work and stuff. I, I was barely sleeping and I had to work on the show like every night, which meant like I got very little game time in. So it was a, that was a rough stretch. I'm not going to lie. That was, um, yeah, but it's over now. So that's what we're going to focus on. Yep. <laughs> it's over. I'm moving on and life is good. So, so you could say, I can play clearly now. The time is gone. I can drink my rum while you sing that. Okay, that works. Yeah, just need a little bit more rum. <laughs> but the good thing is, I don't think you needed rum this past Tuesday if you had heard me speak at a podcast meetup. So this podcast has done something for me on my confidence in groups. So I spoke at a podcast meetup about free and inexpensive podcast tools. And I got a link in the show notes to the PDF I did for it. 
I treat it like a game or podcast. You know, it's actually more frightening to be on the podcast and on Twitch than it is in front of a room of like five people. I mean, it's like, seriously, <laughs> seriously. I mean, it, like they're, they're, they're there on Twitch. You don't know who's listening or the podcast. You don't know who's listening. Hi, mom. Hi, fears, mom. Yeah. Hi, fears, mom. <laughs> and Francis, mom, apparently. Yes. Hi, <laughs> hi, hi fears, mom. Hi, people's moms. That, that was a lot of fun. And I kind of remember my fears this past week of Venus flytraps. So there was a topic in the lagging balls chat, Royal beggar, they bought a Venus flytrap and they named it Tui. And I had always meant to see Little Shop of Horrors. And I think I've seen it as a kid, but I don't remember it. I'm at this age of my life where I'm seeing stuff that I saw as a kid, finally knowing the storylines. Loved it. I mean, everything was lot, it was amazing. And I I just I, I loved the bad singing. I mean, I I, I it's, it's like <laughs> the pop the Popeye movie. Is my favorite. In fact, I did a press report about Popeye. I don't know if you all heard that, but yeah, just like I, I loved it. And then so then I went on Twitch sings because I wanted to see if they had any songs from the, from the movie. And suddenly, Seymour is standing beside me. So I sang that, and I've got a link in the show notes as well to be singing suddenly Seymour. I still have to see that movie. Oh, it's been on my list to watch, and my mom has watched it. I just haven't had time. And I know I've seen bits and pieces of it. I'm glad I'm not alone here because I haven't seen it either. Oh, <laughs> if you love campy movies, you've got to see it. Yeah, I like the Rick Moranis because I have seen Strange Brew. Uh, okay. So yeah. Strange Brew is great. Yeah. That's yeah always there. I watched Strange Brew as well for the first time that I can remember. I've seen it before, but I watched it for the first time knowing the storyline. <laughs> I think that was Capo and you and Shrock and Chat who told me about Strange Brew. So I I, I, I was on a, a Rick Moranis binge. Did you watch Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? Oh, I, that was my jam. Well, that's, I, that's a must for Rick Moranis. Yeah. So I, I went to the Honey, I Shrunk the Audience ride at D- uh, Disney World. Yeah. That was amazing. I was always afraid of the uh, spiders. I would hold my feet up whenever the spiders really come on that one. Scene. Disney nice. World used to have a giant playpen area of. Yes. Uh, yeah. And I have photos of me playing in that oh. as an adult. <laughs> I totally admit I was an adult playing with it. And there's these parents staring at me and my best friend because there's these little kids around age four or five. Trying to go around us as we're climbing up all <laughs> these giant things and taking photos and being stuck in the spider web. It was great. Oh, and what's funny is at your age, all the things that are oversized are, are, are probably small to, to you. Whereas like kids, they're they're big. No, the, 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 the Play-Doh was about the size of me. Okay. So the tub of Play-Doh, I should say. So it is still gigantic for me. But it was definitely designed for younger kids. And I was always jealous when I saw that that playset. I wanted to eat that little Debbie. Oh, that was so. I mean, I mean look at how much cream that was. Oh, I I, I love the movie. They just like stuck oh, their hand yeah. in it. The oatmeal cream pie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I ate more of those than I ever wished. To, I mean, the same that I've killed more Iron Man tunes than I ever wished to admit. I'm on, I'm on my third Iron. It is dwarf, my dwarf paladin, and they are now halfway to 26. That's good. I'm in Duskwit, and I haven't died yet. You have I, me I, beat. You have me beat. I, was say, I hope they haven't died yet, because that's the nature of Iron Man. Yeah. If, if they've died, <laughs> you throw them away. This is my third one, and I'm uh, I'm over Duskwit, and I'm heading to the place where I'm going to go into the crypts. Be careful in there, buddy. Be careful. I'm, I'm going to run out if it's too bad, but if I, I be careful <laughs> I run out, they're going to respawn. So yeah, so we might see the end of Dwarf. And I want to give a shout out just to every, to the people who come to these streams, either the streams for the podcast, the streams for the Iron. All of you just add to the night. Like Wednesday night, we ha- I had a long stream with like different people coming in and like we were in Discord voice chat. All of you make the streaming worthwhile. All of you make the show worthwhile. So if, if you're listening and you've listened to the show or you've been on one of these streams, thank you. Because of viewers like you, that we can do all this stuff. And I have to say, I also want to give a thank you to, to Gin, who has made it a podcast that has taken the world by storm. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> do you have fear? See what you did there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's smooth. It's smooth. I'm smooth, Fraz. Here's something, all right. <laughs> <laughs> love you, Fraz. Uh, I love you, Dally. Hard hand. <laughs> so, Gin. How did you get into gaming? Uh, I would not be lying 
if I said I was born into gaming. Uh, to elaborate, uh, uh, my oldest brother, he is 12 years older than me. So when I was born, we already had a, uh, I don't know the brand, but I know the computer, like make, for example, what, we had a Tandy PC in the, in the household and he was already playing things like King's Quest, uh, like all those early adventure Sierra games, like Space Quest as well. I think before I even have memories, he probably got an NES system. So when people are like the older generation ask what's going on with Twitch, why are all these kids watching other people play games? No, I get it. Like, I, that's how I grew up. I grew up watching my <laughs> siblings play games. Like I was the younger sibling with the second controller that was not plugged in. Like that was me. <laughs> I totally do that to my niece. She finally yeah. caught on. I was watching them play Punch Out, the original one, you know, oh, getting so all good. the way to so good. All the way to Bald Bowl and then dying tragically over and over and over and over and over. <laughs> Cause it's bald bald bowl, man. That guy's hard. Yes. Uh so hard. Yeah. And then the other game that I remember watching well, obviously Mario. I watched Contra for hours and hours and hours and hours. Let's just say uh, my oldest brother managed to beat Contra without the cheat code. No. Wow. <laughs> That's impressive. That's really impressive. Yeah. No, my brother is actually kind of crazy. He would actually play like this. Really? He's holding the controller upside down and he's doing A and B and the D-pad with his you know, index and middle finger. Wow. Wow. Like my brain can't wrap around trying to do it that way. I, I would fail. Yeah, it's I've never been able to replicate it. But yeah, that, that was my brother. He was kind of crazy. He's the one who got me into, into gaming in the first place. So from that, how did you get into the world of Blizzard and World of Warcraft? So it was my brother. He purchased uh, Warcraft. I'm fairly certain Warcraft 2 was the first Blizzard game I ever played, with the possible exception of The Lost Vikings. I don't know which one I played first because I went over to my friend's house and we were playing uh, the Lost Vikings. And that was actually when it was still Silicon and Synapse. Like it wasn't Blizzard back then. Like you would right. turn on the game and it was like, oh, Silicon and Synapse. So I never correlated the two. I, d I didn't know that that was them. And then I was playing Warcraft 2 and it was Blizzard Entertainment in terms of like total Blizzard games. Like I, I, like, I think I was in junior high or something like that, maybe a little bit younger than that. And I, I specifically remember having a conversation with someone uh, on the bus coming home from school. And he was like, hey, have you heard that they're making another Warcraft? And I'm like, oh, my God, they're making another Warcraft. What are you talking about? They're like, yeah, it's called Starcraft. And I'm like, <laughs> what? That's that's not right. Like, yeah, it's going to be Warcraft, but in space. Okay. Luckily, it was not this. It was not a sequel <laughs> to Warcraft. That would have been very confusing. Yeah. But, you know, when you're in fifth, sixth grade, like, you, you know, that, that thing doesn't, doesn't quite register in your mind that that's slightly different uh, games. Because, you know, think about it. Warcraft, Starcraft. Eh, sure. And it's definitely one of those, like, they're, they're in the same engine. So I could see how it would, it would look the same. I mean, it, it would be interesting if it was like the picture universe where they're actually connected. Have you seen the theories of like that, the, that the monsters are on earth when we're up in space with Wally and stuff like that. I mean, maybe Starcraft's in the future and Diablo's in the past and Warcraft somewhere, somewhere in the middle. Yeah. I've heard those theories. They're all bubkis. Yeah. <laughs> and what would you say is your play style in WoW? I vary. Uh, I go from heavy into, you know, raiding. I wouldn't necessarily ever call me myself a hardcore raider most i've ever been into was like whatever the hardest difficulty was i i never we never did that like back in wrath when the hardest difficulty was you know, 20 25 heroic yeah nah we were just 25 normal yeah we were always one step below whatever the crazy level was the crazy level <laughs> So again, I, I take it that you are a big fan of lore because I mean, and that because of this, you started the Morley Gray podcast, where each week you talk with fear about the lore and take the audience along with you. And uh, Tosh Mifuni says that if you like to laugh and learn at the same time, then you need to listen to Morley Gray podcast. So, how did you get into podcasting? I suppose I got into podcasting the same way everybody gets into podcasting: is you listen to a crap ton of podcasts and you're thinking, "I can do that." <laughs> Uh, but the the real answer is uh, I was having conversations with some coworkers uh, that went to BlizzCon with me two years ago, 
is when I actually kind of came up with the idea of the Morally Gray podcast. Um, you know, there was lots of drinking. Surprise. And <laughs> someone was asking, yeah, I really like Warcraft, but I don't know what's going on with the story. And I was like, would you like me to tell you? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, sure. And then I went on a two-hour ramble about the first war, the second war, <laughs> Medivh, the humans, the orcs, you know, Black Morass, the opening of the Dark Portal, how all that went down, and who Sargeras was, and why he was living inside of Medivh, and how all that played out. And no, the Warcraft movie was slightly wrong, uh, but, you know, it's slightly? still a good movie. Just, just slightly, <laughs> right? Yeah, well, it's slightly, slightly. It's more like a parallel universe wrong. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. That's true. <laughs> and then what finally pushed me over the edge to finally go, okay, I got to do this, was I was having a conversation with someone at work, and I was like, yeah, you know, this and that, blah, 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 this, this cool storyline thing, because I've always liked the storyline. I mean, that's actually the main reason why I play games. That's why I think StarCraft is actually probably one of the coolest universes, because it actually has one of the be- the best stories there's just not enough games and, you know, there's not as much investment. Uh, when it comes to what, re- like I said, what really pushed me over the edge was when I was talking to someone about the, you know, the opening cinematic uh, and like the announcement at BlizzCon for ba- that was uh, when they announced Battle for Azeroth. So I guess that was 2017 uh, BlizzCon. Yes. So I was explaining, I was like, you know, this such and such, this happened, blah, blah, blah. There was a burning of a tree that was really important, and this person did it. And they flat out looked at me and said, with a straight face, there was no sarcasm, no sarcasm involved. They said, who's Sylvanas? <laughs> oh. Ooh. Ooh. And I'm like... Okay, do you know anything about this game other than how to tab target and push buttons? And they said, not really. (laughs) And I was like, okay, okay. Did they make a worgen at all? Because if they're doing a worgen, they should really know who she is. And if it's an undead, then they really should know who she is. Now he plays Pandaren. Uh, They're not. That makes sense. They just like noodles. (laughs) Danger noodles. Drunken noodles. Oh, I love those. So that that's what really made me go. Okay, you are clearly not the only person that has this, you know, question. So if anyone has never listened, and that's fine, it's a kind of a crap show. But oh, stop it! <laughs> it's fine. If you've never listened, I will give you a quick elevator uh, explanation of what Morally Gray podcast is. It is me sitting around having, I wouldn't say too much to drink, but just enough to drink. And explaining the lore in, and here's the key. It is in chronological order. It's good for two things, and I'll explain what those are. Uh, The first reason why I chose in chronological order is because I wanted to make sure that everyone started at the same ground level. They knew exactly what was happening. Who's Sargeras? What are the Titans? All that stuff. Blah, blah, blah. And the second reason why I liked the chronological order is I don't have any issue like Frasley does because I always know what I'm talking about next week. (laughs) That's true. I don't have to be like, oh, man, what happened in the news? Who's going to be my guest? No, it's what did we talk about last week? What's up next in the story? It's all chronological. Makes it real easy. I might actually have to listen to your podcast. It's good. (laughs) <laughs> it's not it's not good it's it's passable because that's my one thing that i wish i knew more about was the lore like i know the base just to get me by and like i love shades of gray or, or gray i can never mess yeah anyway i like her because she goes so much into lore but it's all over the place yeah so to like- have someone kind of go down like a proper path except drain or probably puts a wrench in that no, I already decided how I'm going to deal with that. Okay. So, definitely, I haven't listened to a podcast in a couple of years. So, I, uh, yours will be on my list now. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's it's good. Except for Frazzlecast, because you've, you've technically listened to it when you've been on the show. So, you've... Yeah. Technically. So, let yeah. me let me, let me me interject right here. I'm just going to stop all this right here and, and stop you, Jen, because you're ridiculous. Your show is freaking amazing. 
my little lore show that focuses on dungeons, just one little teeny tiny aspect of the lore. I know how long that takes me. And I know the amount of research and time and everything that it takes. So your show, which you are very clearly more knowledgeable than I am, and the amount of detail you put into it, but you also, yes, I know you read the books, whatever, except not Arthas, but we'll talk about that later. Um, <laughs> but the amount of time you put into it to be able to sum it up in a way that makes sense as clearly as you do and just everything that takes, like it is a freaking fantastic show my podcast listening time is limited because there's so many podcasts I try to keep up with. So there's a very short list of shows that I will always listen to when they come out. And seriously, Friday morning, my alarm goes off. I get my earbuds and I start listening to your show. Not even kidding. Like it is amazing. And it's one that I intend to like in time, like actually re-listen to. And I think it's fan. Shut up! It's fantastic, <laughs> and it's amazing. So don't no no one think that it's crap show like he's talking about. It's actually amazing. And if you no, like oh, the whoa, lore, whoa, whoa, whoa. you should. Listen I, to it. I gotta interject. Somebody thinks it's a crap show. Okay, there's always gonna be someone. Okay, yeah, there always be haters. And, haters are gonna hate. I mean, keep in mind, like it is. It is a not safe for work show, and that's not in tune with everyone's tastes and that's okay. If I can but, listen to 50 shades of gray. This, it should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> My guess, Emma, is that people that listen to 50 shades of gray would be okay with a not safe for work podcast. I do put on just, headphones. Just, just saying. saying. <laughs> what does coloring book have to do with Razzly? No. <laughs> okay. No, <laughs> but yeah, seriously, as, gray. as a uh, sniper frog is saying in chat, like don't sell yourself short because it is, fantastic and i have not seen a lore show in a while go through chronologically that's quite the undertaking so it's just fantastic and very well done well thanks what i love about the both of you is you each are praising each other and then like <laughs> and then at the same time you're self deprecating your own your own experience and your own austin that shows your characters that you want to praise people that that you enjoy at the same time, you're struggling with that imposter syndrome. So I, I admire both of you for being for, for being you and know that both of you are awesome. And, and you know what? Doing the lore on the dungeons is not easy. So I give you props because I've thought of doing something similar to other things. And I wouldn't even know where to start. So <laughs> at the beginning, <laughs> I did. Really. I did. I started with vanilla. Worked out nicely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now which dungeons because there's two technically beginning dungeons for vanilla alliance because they're better i did yeah. dead mines because it was <gasps> my favorite dungeon of vanilla <laughs> there you go yeah and then i did stockade and then i moved on but like dead mines was like my first dungeon i ran so it only seemed fitting that was the first one i did because there's a lot of lore in these dungeons and yeah. when you're doing them and you're doing them with even back then random people they just want to speed through it yeah. So you never get the full lore unless you have a, another group that's like, yeah, I'm here for the lore. Everyone just shut up and let me see the role play. Yeah, just remember, look up. Mm-hmm. That's right. Like, it's amazing, like, to, to that point, since if people don't know, like, there's a lot of these dungeons that a lot of work has been put into the ceiling. Either they make it look epic or awesome, or there's, like, an opening. You can see, like, the sky or a different part of the city or something, like. Except never gone. Except for Nomergon, which is a different you, you story. Know the one, but, yeah. one dungeon I'm really looking for in classic, so I have to level attune to that level at least. Sunken Temple? Yes. Yes. Uh, oh, uh, Labyrinth. Yes. Yeah. My best friend There's still remembers you. the whole entire layout and mechanic and everything yep. about it. Because she is the one who like did research <laughs> on this thing and it drew out maps and color code and yeah. And trying to tell like the tank where he needed to go. <laughs> and it's like, no, you can't just click any statue. They have to be clicked in a certain order or it resets and you have to do <laughs> Yeah. For those not on the video Twitch stream, Jen's freaking out over in his corner at Bell Sunken Temple. <laughs> I'm giving him nightmares. That was one of the first dungeons I ran too. And uh, 
I jumped into the middle. It didn't work. <laughs> it oh didn't, yeah, no bad activity. It didn't go well. <laughs> well, that was the problem. Is the tank was my best friend in real life, and he's like, "Oh, let me jump down," and he was a paladin, and he bubbled, <laughs> and then he just watched me go splat because I'm a warrior and I didn't have heroic leap back then. Yep. Yep. Oh, God, it's the kind of friends I have. <laughs> sunken temple. So you want to do sunken temple with us? Blah. <laughs> so- just like Sunken Temple, I suggest if you don't know lore, or if you're like me and you're you know lore, but you're still struggling, start at the beginning of Morley Gray podcast and go up and all that. I, I'm working my way up through it. But again, what has your experience been like so far for 21 episodes? 22 now after this after this is out. Uh, so far, my experience and everything that I've had is well. Just listen to Allie gush about the show. That's pretty much been my experience so far is I've learned about some really cool stuff because, uh, number one, the reason why I did the show was because I didn't know everything. So I wanted to learn some more. Uh, just like Allie likes to say, she's this, what is it? you say you're a servant of the Lord. Is that yes, what you like? Yes. I'm a servant yeah. of the Lord. Yeah. See, I'm just a big, I'm just a big fan. I don't use, you know, flowers. far more than me though. My God. <laughs> So anyway, so my experience so far has been, you know, much like Ali, people saying, oh, my God, this show is amazing. Holy expletive deleted. Uh, I can't <laughs> believe this is a thing. Uh, I've been waiting for this for years because, you know, like you were uh, mentioning, uh, Emma, is Shades of Grey, which is um, <laughs> horrible written book, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, Ann Stickney over from uh, Lore Watch and Matthew Rossi, who's a little bit of I'm I got a little bit of a. Uh, some serious bro crush going on with him because he <laughs> is nothing also wrong with man crush. I'm just saying he's the true like I got warriors because that's that's my main class. I play warrior and he's got like 19 of them. I mean maybe he's got 50 of them. I don't know by by now. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what I like what I like about the show that I do is that I start from the beginning and give them and give everybody like at least a you know, a starting point that you can go on and listen to those other podcasts like uh, Lore Watch and uh, Merely a Setback that they have a a level of understanding that you need to already have to really appreciate. So if, you know, if everybody's got a busy life, like, I mean, probably most of it does, Allie's got her, you know, overtime that she's been dealing with. It's like you don't have time to crack open and, and read this entire top row, those are all Warcraft books. Every last one of them. I love that so much. I'm so jealous of your collection. Hey, and if you don't have time to read, there's always Audible, and they just put a whole bunch more book, uh, Warcraft books on there. Yeah, they put Arthas out. I right? know. Yeah. I Read by that. Christy Golden, even. And anybody who doesn't have Audible, check out All Things Azeroth, because Audible is a sponsor of All Things Azeroth, and use, and use All Things Azeroth's link. And that way you're, you're supporting Allie and you're supporting all things Azeroth. Hey, Allie, what's the uh, code word for the uh, the discount? You mean the code word that Medros always reads out and I zone out during? It used to be bacon. Is it still bacon? No, it's like all ATA 2019 or something. You know what? Jen, keep talking and I'll, um, I'll uh, circle back on that. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> oh, and they also have R- Rise of the Horde, which I think was epic. I love that book. Yeah, I, that is a very good one. I have read that one. I read that one on a poorly copy that the whole book was done on 80 pages. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna bring in my uh, clear alliance bias right now. <laughs> After reading uh, Rise of the Horde, it really solidified my whole mm, alliance is just better because... Everyone's like, oh man, Thrall's the best. I love Thrall. Do you know why you love Thrall so much? He was raised by a human. (laughs) (laughs) That's true, he was. So there, shots fired. So what would you say has been your biggest challenge to overcome? I mean, because I I know a lot of the lore characters had challenges that they've had to overcome and and like they've had the coming of age and stuff like that. I think, Frasley, you can appreciate this answer. My biggest challenge has been technical. Yep. (laughs) Like I'm a I'm a fan of the lore. Like that's fun to me. I, I like researching. I like looking into it. It's great. The main thing that I'm running into is like, look, I have fear 
calling in on Skype, and I have to figure out how to record him and me at the same time and make it sound pretty decent at the same time. Yeah, that's my biggest challenge, and uh, hopefully one day I will make it a little easier on myself, but, you know, until then, I'll keep struggling through it. And uh, here's what I'm going to put out a shameless plug for. If you go to fabulousquest.com and look at the little link to Squadcast in the lower right, right I, I highly recommend Squadcast to anybody that's struggling with Skype and remote interviews. <laughs> but yeah, I would definitely agree. Technical has been one of the things. Like, it seems easier to do than you get into doing it. Then you're like, okay, and when things go wrong, you have to figure out how to do it. I don't want to. I don't want to discourage people from from doing podcasting. So, just know that. It's a game, and I will definitely answer any questions people have on tech stuff. There's also a fun part where it's fun when it, when it works, it's, and it's fun to see the progression. It's fun to see the episodes go and go. Like, I bet you've seen the tech getting, like, you're getting better at it as you go along. Yeah, uh, it's been getting better uh, over the, uh, I mean, we're almost in six months now, because, yeah, it's been a while. So hopefully it gets better from here. Just for anybody who wants to sign up for Audible to compete with uh, again on on knowledge, it is bit.ly slash ATA books 2019. Go there and that way you support all things Azeroth and Alley and stuff like that. So I don't read enough audiobooks, which is why I don't have an Audible subscription. <laughs> <laughs> I have over 75 books so far. I don't know how many books I have that I haven't read yet. I've read or listened to them all. So again, what would you say is the best piece of advice anyone has ever given you? You know, I saw the, the show notes early. And I saw that question, and I wasn't entirely sure how to answer that because I'm not really sure what the best piece of advice I've ever gotten other than the Nike commercial. Just do it. <laughs> like, Absolutely. Like, I don't know. Like Ultimately, when it comes down to doing a podcast, like the only way you can really do it is just sit down and do it. Nothing ever is going to truly prepare you for the challenges and the craziness that is going to be figuring out how to talk every week. Oh, and just real quick, I have to do give a little bit of a plug to Allie. I don't know how you do that thing solo because holy crap, I tried that for a good two months <laughs> of embarrassing myself. Just saying, oh, welcome to blah, blah, blah. And this and that, my name's Jin. <laughs> it didn't work. Didn't work. So the fact that you can actually put out a solo podcast is wow. Like that's congrats. That's, yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons I say we and us a lot. Because in my mind, the listeners are going with me to the dungeons and I'm not alone and talking to myself and my monitor. And yeah. Yeah, yeah but you are. And that's what makes it weird. Shh. <laughs> don't yeah. tell me this. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how anyone can do a podcast by themselves without someone to. Uh, for me, I need someone to feed energy off of. Right. I don't know if I picked the right co host because he didn't. <laughs> He's definitely dragging down the vulg- like the not safe for work rating. We started at real bad, and then I was like, "Dude, we need to cut this back a little bit." So it's not every other word anymore that we're dropping the f bombs, <laughs> but you know, it, it's it, it's still there for comedic effect. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Yeah, this show was clean until I think episode six or seven. <laughs> What are you talking about? It wasn't clean from the first episode. Okay. Well, I, I had in my, in my head that it was clean. And then I, uh, one day I was like, <laughs> you know what? Just screw it. I'm just going to put everything explicit from now on. No, no, no. You, you try to beep it out eventually when you started editing. Yeah. I, I have no <laughs> idea what you mean about that. <laughs> I need one oh. of those buttons. <laughs> oh, wait. No, I don't actually need one. Oh, you don't? Okay, because, I mean, this CoXLR is very nice, I have to say, and uh, I, I, I'm i not an affiliate of uh, GoXLR. I would, love to, I would love to have you as a sponsor if you're listening, <laughs> but I am an MVP on the Discord for GoXLR, though Tyler there does an amazing job with tech support, and it's, it's amazing having the community there with you and the people. So I was asking our community for lore questions for Gin. So Titan's Creed says, no lore question for me, as I know all lore. But how about a speculation question on where 9.0 will take us? Okay, if you're asking for speculation, first off, that's not what I do. I don't do speculation. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you listened to the the one minute like bumper where I says this isn't about spoilers or speculation. Yeah, um, but if you're gonna you're gonna force me, 
Oh, he's I'm forcing gonna, you. I'm helping, okay. helping the okay. force, yes. So 9.0. <laughs> so come November, we're going to go to BlizzCon, and they're going to be like, yeah, here's the, the thing that's going to happen. Ah! And everyone's going to go lose their minds. And they're probably going to be like, uh, 9.0, Return of the Black Empire. That's honestly what I think it's going to be. I could see that. It, uh, yeah, yeah, completely. Yeah, I think it's going to be... I mean, a lot of people are think are speculating and thinking it's going to be something related to uh, death, because uh, if you really look closely at the Warcraft Chronicles, there's not five elements. There's actually six. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get a little nerdy here. Uh, there's the the standard like Avatar: The Last Airbender. There's Earth, Fire, Wind, Water, the good ones. Yeah. And then there's the the Warcraft one that some people know about, which is Spirit. And Spirit is mostly tied to the Emerald Dream. Well, there's the sixth element that is hardly ever brought up, but is tied into the Shadowlands, which is Decay. And a lot of people are like, oh, I think it's going to be a Shadowlands expansion. And there's a lot of you know tie-ins with the death and this and that. But I just think like... Alley running around on her shadow priest with her eyeball still stuck on her head. I'm thinking it's going to be more of an old god thing because I think. Oh, yes. I think the old gods are far more threatening than any kind of, you know, Shadowlands decay. Because, I mean, that's a yeah, big deal. You, you got the spirit world or the Shadowlands, blah, blah, blah. But old gods, they're straight up there trying to corrupt our Titan soul. And turn it all evilly in void, and they're gonna try and create a void titan. That's not good, man. It's not good. You don't want that. No, we 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 need to return that check and all that, and and I mean not void it, just return it to sender. (laughs) It's similar to the theory I have, and it is my theory is based off of the old gods as well. Uh, So basically, we kill Azeroth, plain and simple, uh, because of the Azeroth everything. Azeroth is dead. It it's gone. So we have to find a now a new home. Hey, we get to be like Drenais. We're going to be like Drenais, uh, trying to find a new home base. But because Azeroth has exploded, all the old gods that have been prisoned into Azeroth have now escaped. So they're trying to, you know, kill us pretty much. Um, and we're trying to either recapture them or destroy them while they try to kill us in other planets. And... Basically, we get to ride in a spaceship trying to find new home. Spaceship! Yeah. Benny in the Jets. Uh, like a movie. <laughs> and um, Titan's Green has, a, has another question. Did you read the theory on where this expansion is going and how similar the story is to Bionicle? Nope. Speaking of Lego. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... Uh, I... I, don't, I, I can't say that I've seen Lego Bionicle, so I, I, I cannot deny or confirm... Or confirm or deny if that's true or not, because I have no idea what that is. <laughs> so, shameless plug for another podcast I'm on, uh, Storage Around Azeroth, episode two. Uh, Pete and I talk about this uh, theory, and it, it, it's interesting. And when you talk about like the void titans stuff like that, it goes into some of that. That like we're going to replace Azeroth with Nazoth, and Nazoth is going to be a void titan. Now, if it's the Shadowlands, I'm hoping it's like in Arcane Line, and we get a really cool apartment. That's just asking for Garrison 2.0, and I'm like, mm-mm-mm. No okay. thanks, buddy. So you're being like Thrall, and I'm Garrosh, and you're like pummeling me down and be like, nope, no apartment for you. No, I think it's more like you're Optimus Prime, as in the Optimus, and I'm Negatron. <laughs> nope. For other reasons. We must go after, and we must survive. No. I'm going to turn into a gun, <laughs> and the Starscream no. is going to shoot me. <laughs> And uh, Nihar's asking, if you know all lore, please tell me how many turtles made it to the water. And before you answer, I got to talk about our chat that we had in. Titan Screen says, retrospectively, none has the crabs eat them all. There's always a bigger crab. The Nihar responded with an angry face. And I said, don't be crabby, Nihar. Titan Screen just speaks the truth. And the Nihar responded with rolling eyes em- emoji. And then I responded by face palming my response so Ali could react to when she saw it. I added Frazak Steve to the rolling eyes emoji. So how many turtles made it to the water? 42. 42? Okay. Good answer. Good answer. Yes. Answer to everything. Yes. <laughs> did, you have your, did you bring your towel, though? Of course. Absolutely. 
I've so, got a blankie. Would you would would everybody like a fun little trivia of why Douglas Adams was actually a genius? Yes. Okay. Why did he choose forty two as the answer for the life, universe, and everything? Does everybody? Does anybody know? I feel like I've heard this story somewhere, but off the top of my head, I don't remember. All right. So the answer is forty two. If anyone knows this, it's the ASCII symbol. Like you know when you hold down alt and then push in a bunch of buttons to get the specific symbol that is the uh ascii symbol for the asterisk and if you're doing a select statement in any kind of sql query you're saying give me everything so it is the life universe and everything so they oh <laughs> I like so it's it. just a it's computer programming uh nerdy bit that if you've, never awesome. done, if you've never done a SQL query, you'll be like, that's dumb. But if you have, you'll be like, <laughs> that's genius. Some answer's like, that's my SQL. Again, gets what I'm saying. Have you read Arthas yet? <laughs> nope. Disappointed. Disappointed. <laughs> would, you, would you like me to tell you why? Sure. I think I know why, but let's, let's look for the audience. Tell the that. real reason why is because I played Warcraft 3, and I played Warcraft 3 The Frozen Throne. Oh, I and, get it. I did, too. And I threw my CTR monitor on the dang ground <laughs> when I finished The Frozen Throne, and Arthas was just sitting there like a jerk. And I'm like, oh, oh, this is how we're going to finish the story, is he just wins. Okay, this is wonderful. Blah. It's still... At least once, even even if you just get the audible and it's Christy Golden reading it at least once. Yeah. And, and by the way, that is the reason why I actually got into World of Warcraft is because I didn't start playing until Wrath of the Lich King was announced. And they were like, hey, you're going to be able to kill Arthas. And I was like, sign me up, buddy. <laughs> that little jerk needs to go down. You are empty inside. Just like me. And the truth comes out. What is your favorite story arc in all of Warcraft and why? It better be the gnomes. <laughs> it's not the gnomes. I'm sorry. That's, they, that's, they your, have... that's your answer, Frasley. Okay. Fra I'm, I'm just, quick sidebar, Frasley. I actually wish they would give the gnomes the justice they were due, but they haven't. So the story isn't that great yet. I mean, the most interesting thing that the gnomes ever did in Warcraft 2 and 3 was fly around on a gnomish copter saying, I can see my house. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> my favorite storyline, it's actually really simple because it's, it's really my first one that I really experienced and got to know, was the story of Medivh and Anduin Lothar and King Lane and all that stuff. When I found out about you know, Medivh and how he was, you know, corrupted by Sargeras and he was the reason the orcs even came in. That's kind of what got me into the story. So the fact that that is my favorite, like, I, I feel like it just makes sense. Like, yeah, it, it's, totally. it's, the, it's the one that, that captured me and, and drew me in. And, and the other thing that drew me in was playing Garden of War on Warcraft 2, <laughs> on Warcraft 2 over and over <laughs> and over with my friend on dial up. Yeah. Yeah. Good answer. I like it. I have a question. Because I'm all into Pokemon and battle pets, is there any lore tie-in with the whole companions that you do in your podcast? No. None that I'm aware of as of right now. What about the Dark Moon Bunny? Like I said, none that I'm aware of right now. Okay. That's that's pretty late in the in the show. I, I don't know if anyone... Li I'm, I'm sure a lot of you listen to Dungeon Fables because it's a fantastic podcast. I listen every Sunday. It's great. But she's always talking about like, oh, if you want to know more, just check out Morally Gray Podcast. They'll get there yeah. eventually. <laughs> Emphasis on eventually. Well, they're, so, they're on War of Ancients right now. You've got time before you get to the rest <laughs> chronologically. <laughs> yeah, so... Maybe we will get to the Dark Moon Bunny, but I mean, we haven't even talked about the only orc, literally, the only orc we've talked about so far is Broxigar, and that's because he's a time traveler. <laughs> the time traveling orc. Yeah. Okay, here's 
which one a topic or for lore is your you're looking forward to your most excited one that you just can't wait to get. And Arthur, so Ali gets off my back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, then I will get off your back. Or until you message me, you say, hey, Ali, I finally listened to it, read it or whatever. Then I'll get off your back. Yeah, I'll, I'll read it. it. Like I said, it's, let's see, it's probably right there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good, I like it. <laughs> and you know somebody I know who could tell us when Gen will finally read Arthas? Nazdormu? That that's good, Jen. I like it. <laughs> I, I don't know where Nas Dormu is, and I, and I haven't talked with Nas Dormu, but Emma has has talked with. <laughs> you broke me. You broke me. <laughs> I think Jen broke himself. <laughs> and, and you know, there's no way to drag on this out. <laughs> yes, I got a baseball rally. Yeah, don't worry, Frazzy. <laughs> I'm a fan of puns, so you know, keep them coming. I almost made it the whole episode. <gasps> oh, have you read the series uh, Piers Anthony by Xanth? Because that one's full of puns. And I've read over 35 of the books. I'll put it on my list. All right, it's Xanth, X A N T H. It's on my list. Yes, and the first one is uh, Spell for Charmeleon. I was added to my list too when I get around to it. And I don't mean the actual round. That says to it on it. And the whole series full of puns. But anyway, let's go on. Bradley. Well, and and uh, again, it, it might be below your level in like in, in, in like knowledge and expertise, but definitely check out a series of unfortunate events if you haven't seen it. That series is great. My sister did some of the makeup on the second se- season. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. So, Emma, I think it's time to talk with our good buddy. Kilrog and look into Kilrog's site. Yay! Let's see what the wondrous, mysterious Kilrog site foretells of the upcoming events in Azeroth. Thank you for joining us on Kilrog site, the upcoming events for June in World of Warcraft. Darkmoon Fair starts June 2nd to the 8th, as a lot of us are reminiscing about the good old classic times, almost everyone should remember Hogger. Wouldn't it be nice to have your own little Hogger following you around? Well, you can at the Dark Moon Fair. If you play It's the Hammer Time and score 45 points and get the achievement called That's Whacked, you can also get the reward of Hog Studded Collar that you can summon a companion pet that looks like Hogger. There's also many other achievements and mounts and pets and transmog to collect. June micro holidays that are coming up is a uh, Thousand Boat Bash, June 6th to the 8th. This takes place in Thousand Needles. There are a few quests to construct your own ships. Um, after completing these quests, you get a seven day uh, buff, Boat Day. This will let you use a boat on water on all zones, and hopefully this counts for EFA because this did count for last expansion. So anything of water, you can use this boat on. The weekly bonus for June is Arena Skirmish Bonus Event, June 4th to 10th. 50% more honor awarded when 10 arena matches, awards, Azerite, and Conquest. World Quest Event, June 11th to June 17th, gain 50% more rep. The quest is to complete 20 World Quest Rewards Azerite. Time Walking Dungeon Event, June 18th to the 24th. It's Outlands, I have beast level 71 or higher. Also, you can queue for the Black Temple with a group of people. Finish five dungeons and you'll reward Azerite. Time Warp Badges is also a currency for transmog, heirloom upgrades. So collect those as well, and there's amounts that can drop. Battleground bonus event, June 25th to July 1st. You get 50% more honor when you win a battleground. Quest is to win four battleground and reward conquest and five marks of honor and Azerite power. Main holiday for June is Midsummer Festival, June 21st to July 3rd. Across all Azeroth and Outlands and Draenor, bonfires have been lit to honor the factions. Travel around to each bonfire to honor the flames or desecrate the fire to receive gold, X-speed, and burning blossom. 
Burning Blossom is a currency for this holiday, which you can buy items for achievements, holiday transmog, pets, toys, and upgrade for heirlooms. Holiday Boss is a Thum, and he drops a satchel of chilled good, which is a chance of dropping a pet, a cloak, an illusion, an enchantment recipe, or a two-hand staff. To defeat this boss, you need to wait until his shield is down. Ads will spot him in this time. Just DPS them down, and once the shield is down, hero if you have one, and burn that boss down to nothing. There's a lot of fun things to do this month, so go out and have fun. And speaking of classic, I learned a cool thing. So I was talking about how I missed the day to night cycle. Found out that Darkmoon Fair has a potion to make it classic night. Because that's one thing I'm going to look forward to when classic comes out is the day to night cycles. Like, I think now all these wimps who are like, I can't see anything at night. Deal with it. <laughs> Doesn't it still transfer? To day and night, it does, but it's like I, I, it's, a, it's like a dusk. It's no longer the you really feel like it's it, it's night. Well, I'm at right now in the uh, dark shore, and it, it's pretty dark out. Yeah, but it was darker. It was, it was... I know, I remember. It was great. Oh, it, it was. Did you guys know that dark shore originally was going to require you to have a light source to walk around when they were still that would be like awesome. testing the alpha? I would love that. That would have been like, cool. Yeah, Darkshore and Duskwood would have required you to have an offhand as a torch to walk around to figure out where you were going. I love that. I have I have one, so it would work. Yeah, Bring yeah. It. Uh, I have it, it. I have it as transmog now. I might have had one at one point. I remember in Enercan line, you you could have a pet with you that could emit light around you. That, that was cool. Yeah, that'd be useful. All this looking back at at past times and and remembering things. One thing that we love to do on this show is trivia. Whenever Amazon, we do trivia. <laughs> and it is trivia from Kata slash Smop. Yeah, and some older-ish, depending. Yeah. So again, I was excited that it worked out that you were here for trivia. I got my own trivia for you later. Okay. Oh, nice. Oh, oh. trivia. Oh. And, and Frazzle, you have my trivia card, right? Yes. Well, each person will have six questions. You try to answer it to your best ability. We, we might, you know, be easy. We might be hard. It depends on how we feel with the person. The rules are always kind of gray. Uh, but you have six questions to try and answer. And whoever answers the most correct of their six, not someone else's six, your six, uh, will win. And Frazzy will let everyone know what they win. Who, who wants to go first? I'll, I'll let someone else pick. I'll go first. Okay. I volunteer as tribute. Okay. Your first question. In what zone can Goblin Run City known as Area 51 be located? Netherstorm. That is correct. I went back there because I was working on Loremaster in Atland. Ah. Which race is not featured in archaeology profession? Mogu, Troll, Draenei, or Human? Human. That is correct. Because I did archaeology a lot in Legion, and I was like, see, I, I was digging up the right answers for myself. Okay. This card is really easy. Who was Sen Jin's successor as leader of the Dark Spear tribe? Taking a stab at it, Vulgen? That is correct. Nice. See, I didn't make an ask for myself. It's so hard to bite my tongue with these answers. I'm like, ah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> what item, if in your character's inventory, will allow you to find dark moon artifacts in dungeon raids and battlegrounds? The Dark Moon Adventure Guide Journal thing. That is correct. <laughs> I don't think thing is the official title on their Frasley. Okay. Uh, it, it, yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. This one I'm going to totally mess up because I can't say any of these names. So I'm just going to quickly type it into Twitch. Because so you can see it visually. Names are hard. I get that. Yeah. Re- names are super easy. All you got to do is you just make up nicknames for them and then refer to them as that name for all the time. It cracks me up when you do that. <laughs> for okay. example, Manoroth is Manny. Good. Hmm. All right. These three things 
are type of what creature? So that's Gazrilla, Akuma, and Gishanakan. Something. Um, they're part of what creature? An octopus? Kinda, but no. It's a hydra. Ah, oh, okay. Hence, Come on, Frasley. Hence why I said kinda. I've talked about Gazrilla. <laughs> okay. My short memory. Last question. I'm going to write that out. Names are hard, okay? That's why I don't do a lore show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I give, give you guys... Uh, That's why I have a bloopers episode. This is why I do it in chronological order, because <laughs> I just read and tell you the story. So, all right. The first one is, in which dungeon is the final boss? Yeah, Ingvar the Plunderer. Resurrected mid-fight by the... Valkyr and hide the collar. I'm going to take a stab at that two Utgard pinnacle. Close. The other one. The other one. Utgard keep. That is correct. I'm giving it to you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what? <laughs> like I said, rules change constantly. Usually, sure. Presley kind of loses. So, and if we have an two epic lore, his card here, was kind of easy this time, though. I, I do just, have to say that. I, I did. I did let him pick. I have them flat out. And yeah, two. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, he has five out of six, so it's not a perfect one. So there is still a chance for someone to win. So Allie's going to win. I got it. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, you're going to win. Because there was a lot of dungeon-related questions you had there. And, uh, on we all... that card. Yeah, on that card. Okay. Uh, who's going next? I think Jen should go next. Fine. Let's do Jen next. Okay. <laughs> okay. This one I'm pretty sure you're going to get. Uh, <laughs> what is the historical capital city of the Blood Elves? Silver Moon. What is not a World of Warcraft fish? So this is your knowledge on fish. <laughs> I used to fish a lot, so I might I might be all right. So you should get this. Black belly mudfish, red belly mandarin, yellow spout trout, or ice fin bluefish. Okay, it's either between B or C, because I absolutely rem- I definitely re- recognize A and D. So we got red and yellow. I'm going to go with the yellow, so C. That is correct. Yellow spat trout. See, you were fishing up out of your memory. Yeah, see? Uh, That's exactly what I was doing. Who was married to the Emperor Dragon Thracian? Thracian? It's Moria. Yes, that is correct. Let's move along. (laughs) (laughs) Why, you didn't like my butchering of the name? Yeah, it's Moira, the leader of the now uh, Dark Iron Dwarves, uh, yeah. my my patron saint, and uh, because I am now a Dark Iron Dwarf. Yes, Moira. <laughs> Which mount used to offer the service of Arcane Reforger? Came out in Pandaria. I was going to say, you're not going to give me a multiple choice? Uh, because <laughs> no, no, There's no multiple choice. Okay. Um with your with your hint, I'm gonna go with the Traveler's Tundra. No, 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 no. That's that's the current one that I have. Uh, what is it? The freaking yak. It's the Traveler's Mac. I don't know the exact name, but it's the stupid yak with the grumbles on it. Uh, I'll give you half a point. Yeah, I, that I, works. We we gave Frasley Ugar keep after oh, hints. Like okay. I feel like Jen should get that one. Yeah, yeah I mean, you're yeah. correct. It is the yak, not the the mammoth. It's a Grand Expedition Yak. Yeah, just so everybody knows, I don't have a lot of gold. I got the mammoth. I don't have the yak yet. And I definitely don't have long boy. Good golly. Uh, I'm not I want that. him, but I don't, I don't have, I'll never have him. Unless somehow someone give me all their gold because they're leaving World of Warcraft. Hint, hint, yeah, nudge, nice. nudge, anyone? <laughs> <laughs> not that we want anyone to leave World of Warcraft, though. We want people to stay in because of the sub well, numbers. Or they cap out on their gold. They just give it to me and then they can cap again. Okay, yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Which corrupted Titan was the creator and leader of the Burning Legion? Seriously? That's yeah. my question? That's okay. your question. It's Sargeras. That was episode one of Morley Gray. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you guys are getting all these easy questions. I'm going to get like all the hard ones. That I'm not going to know. Watch. 
hey, you're the one who told me to give him that point. I was going to give him a half a point. Hey, you know what? Five and a half beats five. So I was okay with five. (laughs) Or I was okay with half. (laughs) And you know, that last one, you were like Sargeras and you sliced the question in half. Yeah, I did. That's right. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Last question for you. Players will typically refer to which raid instant as AQ40. Yeah, that's Encourage. The whole thing? Yeah, I think AQ40 was Encourage Temple, but I could be wrong. You're I, close. You got it all mixed up. Yeah, Temple, I think, was AQ20, and I don't remember what AQ40 was. No, 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 I, no, no. You just mixed up the order. Temple of Encourage? There we go. Nice. I'll okay. Give it to you. I'm just, I knew AQ, I know AQ40. I don't know the real name. <laughs> like, what is, like, what do we call them? The Battle for Dazzle Door? Like, I barely know that one. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I do the same thing. <laughs> okay, I am sorry, Allie, if this card is hard. Okay, my memory sucks anyway, so it's probably, I'm probably going to fail miserably. It's going to be awesome. Just blend, the, just blend the rum. That's what I oh, would Just do. wait until Frasley does my I'm not I can't blame the rum. I will probably be like the, the worst. Anywho. All right. So your first question. Which is not an Eastern Kingdom zone? Swamp of Sorrows, Dunmora, Tanris, or the Badlands? Tanaris. That is correct. <laughs> when... The World of Warcraft launch, which two classes were sh- faction restricted? Shaman and Paladin. That is correct. The orcs arrived on Azeroth during which war? War of the Ancients, the First War, Second War, or Third War? <laughs> Third War. Byron, what was that? Third War. I- I'm sorry, what was that? Think about it, Allie. Just think. Just think for a second. <laughs> Wait, say it again? Okay, the orcs arrived on Azeroth during which war? War of the Ancient, First War, First War, Second War, or Third War? (laughs) I I don't, I could have... First war? Yeah, Frasley. Yay! There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I my 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 I, I should not get credit for that because I was just what? picking my nose. I'm sorry. I had to I had to get the booger. <laughs> I'm sorry, you got it. They they all got handicap questions. That was your handicap question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I thought third war. I really I don't know why that was too and I even just recently talked about like like I just like I said, like I'm not I'm not the brightest person. I was going to say, you just did the black grass. I know, crazy. No, no. <laughs> I know. Okay. Next question. <laughs> what type of blood pet can you summon using the blood sale Emerald's hat? Nothing where you get the hat from. So, what pet is it? A parrot? That is correct. Okay. I'm going to totally mess up their names. Cthulhu. Yoga Sa- Saran. Yoga Saran. Yeah. Are a member of which unbelievably powerful ancient race? Old gods. Yep. <laughs> that one was easy. <laughs> All right. Last. So is the last- first war. <laughs> See, I, I, I heard a whisper of an old god a second ago. Um, last question for you. Which apothecary cannot be found in Shadow? Fan keep during Love in the Air season event. Okay. Uh, uh, do I get multiple choice here? Yeah, there, there, there Frey. is. Frey, Baxter, Copeland, or Hummel. And Emma, you got high praise from Winchester. <laughs> Winchester said every time you say that is correct, they picture Chris Farley and Billy Madison. Oh, Billy yeah. Madison. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, that is correct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, God, you do that so well. <laughs> Which one of those cannot be found in Shadow Food Keep during the love in the air and that, you know, the invisible love rocket that's parent yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
the mount that does not exist? I feel like it's between the second and third one. I'm going to say Copeland. That is correct. Yeah. So at this <laughs> point in time, we have a tie. I still say Jin one because I, yeah, no. I haven't gone yet. I might have be in there too. Oh, okay. 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 Sorry. Sorry. I'm a summer. But, but, but right. Bradley has to read my card. Yeah. And I got a question for Allie. Did you okay. learn the answer to the last question? In a van down by the river. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris Farley is a soft spot for me because I don't oh, know if you guys followed. So- I was gonna—I don't know if you guys followed my Twitter account, but many of the gifts that I use are Chris Farley. Yeah, they are, uh, and I love them. Yeah, and, and and that is why every single episode when we're about to have fear, go ahead and give his recap. It's always Chris Farley saying, "John Hancock, it's, it's Herbie, Herbie Hancock." Hancock. <laughs> <laughs> and have you seen jen the dancing chris farley in warlords are we talking about the ogres yes yeah oh so this is a fun little story so i got at one of the ctr parties at blizzcon i answered of course a lore question and i was given one of the or the actual warcraft trading card game like you know the loot things and it was the two-headed ogre that you can turn into. So I turn into that thing all the time and do the slash dance. That's Chris- awesome. Yeah. And guess who gave it to me? Mr. Pat Crane. Ooh. That's awesome. Yeah. I felt really bad, too, because it was a super easy question. It was like, what dungeon do you have to do a dragon bombing run in first from Cataclysm? Grimbethal? <laughs> yeah, there you go, Frasley. You just yep, want an ogre, yep, you yep. just want an ogre, but I don't have one to give you. Aww. I already bought it years ago. Talk to Pat. <laughs> no, I've got the Dancing Ogre because I, I went on a binge one time I got my, my tax refund and went on eBay and bought a bunch of the cards. So I own a lot of toys. Because I like my toys. So Emma, yeah. Uh, so you, your first question is the failed world tree Vortersil can be found in which Northrend zone? The world tree? Yeah. You mean the one that burned down? Yes. Or the one that's still around? Uh, sort of, maybe. <laughs> are we talking about the one in Darnassus, or are we talking the one in Hygel? No, no, this one's in Northrend. Oh, no, hold on. Northrend? Yes. There's a world tree in Northrend? Yeah, yes. there is. It's <sighs> It's not, I don't think it's in Grizzly Hills. Maybe. Is it? I don't know. Um, shoot, nor- Northrend. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to think of all the zones because I think Grizzly Hill is one place. Then there is uh, the Circle place. Um, it's a circle. <laughs> I can think of it, but I can't say the name. It's a circle. Caldera. What circle play? What? <laughs> The circle plays the cold air. That's a sub zone. That's not even a zone. Crazy. <laughs> no, well, there's a there's a in Northern. There's a circle place of all greenery, and there's two factions, and you can only be hated. Shoals are basin. Yeah, that. Yes. <laughs> there's that a one. Circle place. <laughs> it's, a, it's a circle on the map. <laughs> I farmed a lot in there. Okay. <laughs> Did you? It's, it's Actually, around in a circle. It was that was actually a really good place to farm Saranite and it, yeah. yes, it was. Uh, that's where I used to fly around too. <laughs> so it's like okay, that could be in the World Tree, Grizzly Hills, or let's see. No, everywhere else is really cold, unless it's in the Crystal Forest thing. <laughs> There's a World Tree up there. Yeah. You said okay. Think of a place that has trees. I did. Those were the, those were the, those and were a poop the, quest. Well, that's not fair because so many zones have poop quests. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was a crappy answer then. <laughs> okay, you can't see my face right now. I am. I, I'm okay. I'm, I'm going more towards because the only place I can think of that has lots of trees is Grizzly Hills. And apparently I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what other places have trees? 
leaves. I'm trying not to give away the answer. Because <laughs> there's Helen Ford. Oh, but you're listing so trees. many things. You have to actually pick something. I know. You have, you have said the right answer. I have. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is no. Okay. Sarlon Basin, because I know there's like a, a portal thingy. That, all right, I'm going with that. I'm sorry. Uh, it is Grizzly Hills. And the reason I know this. <laughs> I should have gone with my first. You said it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> and the reason I know it is because I quested in Grizzly Hills recently and did the quest to get finished off Grizzly Hills. Wow. So, is that where the, the bears live in? The hollow tree? Yeah. Yes. That is exactly uh, where it is, you silly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a hollow tree. It's not even alive anymore. Yeah, because uh, they cut it down. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, this next one. We're, we're going to see if these questions are cut from the same cloth. Which is not a World of Warcraft type of cloth? Mage weave, rune cloth, spell silk, or linen? Say the middle two again. I know. Rune cloth, spell you silk. Know, Allie. You don't know. No, rune cloth is one. Taylor. Okay, say them again. Hold on. Mage weave, rune cloth, spell silk, linen. Spell cloth, you make that. You don't pick it up. No, he said spell si- spell silk. Spell silk. Spell silk. It has to be that one. Yep. Okay. <laughs> it made me think I did it wrong. Okay. Which dragon aspect leads the green dragon flight? Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, come on, Emma. I know. It's a, uh, all the names of the tip of my tongue. Well. I have a question. <laughs> Currently or when the card was printed? Oh, Probably when the man. card printed. Too soon, man. <laughs> okay, okay. Too soon, too soon. Uh, oh, what's what's her name? It's a her, right? I got the red one in my head, which I think is Alistraza. And it's not okay. Rathion. That's not the question, but I good know. job. <laughs> I'm trying to go through the names here. <laughs> Keep going, you'll get it. Well done, Allie. That's not the question. Because <laughs> <laughs> she dies in the last expansion. Yeah, what's her name? I can picture her death completely. <laughs> her sister. It's, well super, <laughs> it's super sad. A little it tear. Is so sad. I know. It is. And if you go back to the spot, the, the ground has greenery of where she died. Oh, but the good news is, is that Elun, whoever the hell she is, elevated her into the stars. Yeah, but her death spot is permanently green laid out as her dead body was. If you go yeah, back if, there. Just so you know, if you've listened to Morley Gray podcasts, you would have heard her name a lot. Hey. <laughs> Give me a sec. That's apparently really helpful, Jen. Good job. Okay, and I know, coming from the the one who said I listened to that one, and then then the the War of the Ancients. She doesn't. She no no. This is the Emerald Dream one. She's from the Emerald Dream. Uh, both both. Yeah, you're both right. <laughs> <laughs> She's involved in the War of the Ancients and the Emerald Dream. We're just looking for a name. I know. I, I, you got this, Emma. Come on, come on. She's a card in Hearthstone. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. Um, green dragon flight. She sleeps all the time. Uh-huh. They go visit her in to help her with the whole Deathwing thing. Um, yeah. Shoot, I have all the damn other dragons in my head except for her. Because <laughs> guess what? The blue dragon flight started popping in my head. <laughs> oh, and then but we're too, talking about too the green. Soon. Too soon. Oh. oh man, we just talked about them getting <laughs> slaughtered. That was not good. Oh. Yeah. That was bad. That's when oh, we definitely. just like murder all you blue dragonflights. And now <laughs> yeah, well, Winchester gives you the hint of she's green. Yeah, she is green. <laughs> yes. Well done, Winchester. Well done. I know. And I, every other flight except for the green ones in my head. I can't. You literally have green. everything about her. Nailed down. She's green. Name. She's Come in on. the Emerald Dream. She's got her eyeballs closed. And she's really creepy. She's a Hearthstone card. Come on. You got this. 
Set her name. Oh, oh. Okay. I can think of this. Chat is handing it to you on a silver platter. Or or a green platter. <laughs> or a red platter, technically. <laughs> considering who's giving the platter. It's bone scenarios. <laughs> Okay, okay. Lore interjection here. Uh, There's actually some... uh, There's a little bit of uh, speculation of whether or not she actually boned Malorn, and that's how where scenarios came from. And funny thing about the the dragon fight, in in the the boning scenarios came from Pete, so I didn't just think of that. But a funny thing is, (laughs) I was going through Legion on an alt, and you know when Managos goes... Oh, <laughs> I took <laughs> I took some some romantic music and added it, and I found his audio clip, and I, I'm on stream just going, I was going. Oh, <laughs> I... so like cheap '70s music playing. <laughs> so right now, people on the recording are hearing some very cheap '70s porn music playing right now. Found yeah. I, I see the anagram. And I'm horrible at it. Uh, yes, Better. you're on. I don't know. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll give it to you. It's the Sarah. Yes, yeah, I wouldn't have gotten it. I don't give it to me because I'm. I really would not. Have got it. I have every other stupid dragon flight in my head. I had Maligosa's Cal- uh, Caligos. Um, I had Raphion. I have Dathrain, who's also Netherian. I have Anixia. I have all these stupid dragons in my head except for this one. Now I know why you're why you sometimes are feel scattered because you've got all these dragons flying around. That makes so much sense. <laughs> Except for the green dragonfly, I don't have that one. Yeah, see, apparently they're dead. You, if, so I was gonna say, if you listen to my podcast, you would totally get this because it's super easy. Because even Neltharian, that's a little too confusing. We've just started referring to him as Nelly. Okay, it's no. really simple. I want my Nether- um, um Raphion. I want my Raphion back. Well, you. you- you can't have him. He's no, he's, he's not mine. coming back. He's no. he can't, you can't have him. He's not coming back. He he has to come back. No, he's gonna be like my Dan. Just you know, go away. <laughs> All I'll Nobody say is <laughs> yes. Again, oh, you know how you mentioned me looking at news stories for the for the for the episodes and stuff like that. Anybody who's enterprising who wants to look at spoilers, look at Wowhead or MMO Champion or Icy Veins about. A certain black dragon, and yeah, yeah, we'll move on from. Th- okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so my baby back. <laughs> okay, baby, uh, baby uh, back ribs. No, yeah, yeah. So, which ferocious bear mount can only be obtained by slaying the leaders of an opposing faction? The black war bear. Correct. Give me the mounts. I'm good with mounts. Who created the abomination, Rotface and Festergut? Um. Uh, that is Lich King. Uh, no, yes, that's Lich King. Uh, Doctor. He- I know he says. Good news, everyone. I think I've perfected a plague that will destroy all life on Azeroth. I remember yeah. that part all the time. He's not a doctor. Not? No, he, he does have his PhD, but he's not a doctor. He, he teaches at a university. You probably could call him a doctor, but usually when you're, you know, attending courses, Mm -hmm. perhaps a lecture, you wouldn't necessarily call him a doctor. You would call him, you know, a slightly elevated version of teacher. Professor. Yes. Professor. Uh, I know he's undead. Uh... Yeah, that's your hint. He's based off of Professor Farnsworth from uh, Futurama. So I know his his things, yeah, rot, rot face. Well, you already said it, rot face and fester guts. I have no clue. So the real reason she doesn't know this is that she got invincible early on and didn't have to farm it a million times like I am. Yeah. Me I also too. got a second one to give to my best friend who went don't with me. Don't tell me this. Don't. don't and, me this. And, and I have gotten like seven precious ribbons. Except on my main. My main, for some reason, can't get precious it's ribbon. I'm but I did have to that. run it tons of times to get the uh, legendary weapon which i did on my warrior paladin and dk so really you have no excuse for not knowing this no so that's what you're saying well no by the time i did it on my warrior i found out i only had to run the dungeon three times to get everything yeah i yeah you can make fun of me too because i got the bloop proto drake you know still don't have that probably i, I got that one too 
I think it was the second time I ran that place, and I just, Oof. I just, I just won the roll. I just clicked need. Gross. Six run for me on that one. I still um, don't have it. Uh, I'm trying to think of the other mount. That, oh, the Rivendare Death Charger. I got that the first time doing it. But you do know what this boss is, though. <laughs> no, I don't. I have no clue. So right now, Allie is staring daggers into Gen and I right now, and, and Emma on all these Dying mounts. Right now. So, uh, um, I'm gonna say Professor. Professor, I have no clue. Professor, I want to say something clever, and I'm not that clever. Uh, I don't know. Professor Frankenstein, I have no clue. Professor Mary Shelley. <laughs> so I've got some bad news, everyone. It is Professor Putricide. Yeah, I wouldn't have known. <laughs> now, hopefully, you know this next one. Okay. So, Captain Cookie. Admiral Ripstarl and Glove Talk can be found in which dungeon? Dead Mines? Correct. I know Dead well Mines. At least you knew that one. <laughs> yeah, thank God. I would really give you a hard time if you hadn't. I'm bad with names. Give me anything w- not to do with names and I'm good. I was going to give you crap. Okay, so we need a uh, tie question. Give me a sec. Oh, crap. Okay. Yep, I still say Gen One, but okay. No, 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 no. We. I am looking at one of the old cards. So if you've listened to any of the Frasley shows, this question has been on there, and I'm trying to find one that is hard because those are the best. That would be too easy. (laughs) Winchester. (laughs) Okay. Winchester, he won. (laughs) All right. I'm pretty sure both of you guys will have issues with this one. Okay. All right. Jen's going to win. Okay. How many signals of wisdom are needed to complete the strength of one's foe legendary quest line? Three? I was going to say a hundred. You're both wrong. So you get it. It's another number. What was? Oh. Um, okay. How many signals, uh, sigils of wisdom are needed to complete the strength of one's foe legendary quest line? 50. 25. Both are no. $1, Bob. $1. <laughs> okay, here, here's this. It's under 20. 10. That is correct. I remember that. I, don't I, no I still said, I said third war, which is, compl- I just... So stupid of me, so I okay. still say that Gen 1. My only question is, Third what four. is that legendary for? I have no clue. Now i got to figure out where that card is. Sigils of Wisdom, like... All right, let's what? see. I Oh, this is actually from uh, Pandaria. This quest is no longer obtained. And it's uh, the 10 oh, signal the, the, of the... power and 10 signals of wisdom uh, from Mongshan oh, Ult. okay. It's the, the cloak. Heart. Yeah. Oh, the cloak. Oh. It's the original people's go. legendary. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I told you I would pick a really hard one. Also a weird one. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I picked it too easy, like there there is um oh, Yeah. There's 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 the difference between lore and random stupid facts that no one needs to know. <laughs> like this one. How many rings can a character equip? Two. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's, so there's That's too easy. Exactly. Earth Fury is a raid tier for which class? What was the name? Uh, Earth Fury. Shaman? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, as you see, so as it's, say, it's easy. It's Earth. <laughs> so I, I mean, it, it's not necessarily Earth Fury. Is it? Because, like, what? <laughs> Fury, I mean, that just goes warrior, but Earth, like, what? Yeah, Earth makes it Shaman. That's silly. I don't like that. <laughs> That's silly. <laughs> the, uh, it d- is a silly place. <laughs> the dynamic female Shivia or whatever. How many arms? Six. Yeah. See? So it's like, I could pick tons of questions, but one where you both are stumped, that is the hard part. Well, well done, Emma. Yes. Well done. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Ali won today. Yes, Next time goes, Jen's on, we'll see. Allie, then no. Jen, then Frasley, and there's Jen me won. last with three. 
<laughs> no, I will give it Allie one because she's she's close to episode fifty. I'm almost I'm only close to episode twenty five. <laughs> so it makes sense. Yeah, no. It makes I sense. I said third more. I failed. So Allie one are love and affection. <laughs> What Ali won is the fact that she really likes the third war. And so that was stuck in her head. And so that's what just came out. It's a, you have won uh, uh, universal love and affection, universal love and affection, not guaranteed. (laughs) (laughs) So before we go though, I I hear that Ken has some bonus trivia for us. I do. This is a sneak peek to the episode that is coming out tomorrow. Okay. So me and my wife, if you follow any of my social media, you would see that we have currently been playing Monopoly. Well, we took a break and we are we then decided that we're going to go ahead and take a break, take it nice and easy, and we're going to play a trivia game. And the said trivia game is Golden Girls Trivia. <laughs> Ooh. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah, right. All right. All right. So, no pressure. Fear got all four questions correct. (laughs) Here we go. And is this where any of us answers when we get it right? Uh, I'm going to start with Frasley. We're just going to go around the bend. Frasley, (laughs) out of the four Golden Girls, so that is your that is your criteria. You got A, B, C, and D. You know, you got you got Sophia, you got Dorothy, you got Blanche. And you got Rose, okay? Those are your four choices, okay? Here we go. Yes. Which golden girl had a sister named Gloria? Blanche. All right. See, I'm a, I'm a mean dictator, and that, the answer is incorrect. Ah. The answer is Dorothy's sister's name is Gloria, okay? Ah. So, Allie, we're going to give you the hard one. We're going to give you the hard one because <laughs> this is the tough one, okay? Which golden girl's daughter became a mother through artificial insemination? Rose? Incorrect. It is Blanche. (laughs) It was her daughter, Rebecca. Okay. And Emma. Here we go. Which major the golden girl's role was first cast? Which a role of the sisters? Like which one? Yeah, which which of the Golden Girls? So you got the same thing. You got Dorothy, Rose, Sophia, or Blanche. Which one of those do you feel was cast first? Blanche. Incorrect. It's Sophia. Oh, Estelle I still Getty. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get a tiebreaker here because we got one more, one more. All right, here we go. We got one more. First one to shout out the correct answer is going to win this because all three of you have failed in your girls and girls trivia. (laughs) Who was the first roommate to move in with Blanche? Rose. That is correct. Emma wins. (laughs) Nice. I'm not going to say your fear level uh, because (laughs) he got all four. He got all four of those questions correct. I love that fear got them all right. That's amazing. (laughs) That's pretty hilarious. I, yeah. I haven't watched Golden Girls since it's been I, a while. I was like I don't know, a young teenager. No, when I skipped home from school. Don't skip school. <clears throat> <laughs> no, that was the price is right for me. Yeah. Yes. You stay home, you watch the prices. Price is right, right and Bob Ross. Oh, the thing is my mom didn't know I was home. Oh, okay. So I didn't have to share the TV with anyone. Okay, so so I'm gonna so I'm gonna go back to what was previously mentioned, where Allie said she was uh, she was celebrating her her five year anniversary. Well, I am not exactly young, but I'm also not exactly old. Me and my wife are this June will be celebrating our sixteenth wedding anniversary. Aww. Congratulations! June is a good month to get married, my friend. It is. Yeah. it is so that's so that's the thing. Here's the here's the fun trivia fact. I got married when I was eighteen. Awesome. So, you, so based on that, you can figure out. Wow, you're crazy. Why'd you do that? And also, 
Well, I don't now know how old Jin is. <laughs> <laughs> well, congrats. Yeah. But I'm sorry, my opa and my nana totally have you guys beat because they've been married for 73 years. And before that, they were together. Yeah. Well, I mean, I eventually, I mean, once we figure out how, you know, to just not die, like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to have your opa and nana beat. But I mean, I got, <laughs> you, I got, I got some well, time. Well, you got 73 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's okay. There's gonna be how, okay, okay, Frasley. How many episodes of Frazzlecast am I gonna have to be on before I be Opa and Nana? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, sixty-four. That feels like a lot, but also not that many. Yeah, I mean, I can't believe it's already one hundred and nine. <laughs> so you have yeah, sixty-four episodes. Okay, just yeah. sixty-four episodes or sixty-four years? Uh, <laughs> or no, wait, yeah, both. Hashtag yeah, back both. So wait, <laughs> you you were eighteen when you got married. Mm-hmm. You're celebrating sixteen years in June. In June, so you and I are either the same age or I'm slightly older than you. Eh, you figure it out. I just turned thirty five in March. Uh, then you're slightly older than me. There you go. So you're not that old. No, I'm slightly younger than you guys. Slightly. And I've got one final thing I want to say to all of you tonight. That you're the youngest going here. <laughs> thank you for being a friend hell hell yes to the very end of the show so the, we have reached the end of frazzlecast we, we had a, a glorious time i want to ask all of you where can we find you on the interwebs we'll start with again best place to find me is you can pretty much go to all of the social medias with the exception of Snapchat, because as Allie just pointed out, I'm super old and I don't understand how that thing works. Just play with the filters. Yeah. Yeah. If you uh, if you check out at Morally Great Pod, you're going to find pretty much everything there. Okay. So you can go to at Morally Great Pod on the Twitter. You can go to Facebook.com slash Morally Great Pod. You can even go to at Morally Great Pod on Instagram and see what's going on with the Gilmore Girl. Not Gilmore Girls. We love Gilmore Girls. <laughs> That's a good one. Now, this is Golden Girls trivia. Next month is probably going to be Gilmore Girls because, yeah. That one I would be good at. I watched the whole entire thing. I'm just saying hashtag. And we're glad that she wound up with Luke. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we wanted. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that's that's where you can find me. It's Morally Great Pod. Morally Great Pod dot com. Morally Great Pod. Mother, yeah. Everywhere Morally Great Pod. You can find it. And Allie Gilmore, where can we find you? <laughs> Allie Gilmore. Can I take Allie Morgan instead? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that sounds a little too much like em- Emily Gilmore, and nobody wants to be Emily Gilmore. And I honestly I just never really watched Gilmore Girls. <gasps> Don't hate me. <sighs> Don't hate me. I haven't either, no, no, Ali. So we don't hate you in the same <laughs> way that you feel disappointed that I haven't read Arthas. So that's the same. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> Anyways, you can find my show at dungeonfables.com or on Twitter at dungeonfables, or you can find me on Twitter at Alianders K. And you can hear me every week on all things Azeroth. And Lady Emma, when you are 95 or 96. You'll be at home dyeing your hair just like Betty White is in all those Facebook posts. But I've never dyed my hair. Oh, you never dyed your hair? I've never okay. dyed my hair. Me neither. Look at my beard. <laughs> <laughs> I have virgin hair, thank you very much. And I'm proud of it. It's yeah. also down to my knees. That's fear, what's what. I was just saying, fear tried to call me like 100% gray, not morally gray. And I'm like, bitch, no, I'm Calico. <laughs> I, I'm a dirty blonde and all that. That's what I used to be. I'm a blonde blonde. So where can we find? <laughs> They've killed Pikachu <laughs> again. I'll fix him in a minute. When you, Pikachu's not being killed at your house. Where can we find you, Emma? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can find me in World of Warcraft or uh, you can find me on Twitter at lady underscore Emma. Yes, there is an underscore. And most things, if you're trying to find me, it's lady underscore Emma, lady zero Emma. It's lady Emma something. Pretty simple. If you really want to stalk me, I'm probably going to be doing a lot of baking on Monday. So come by. There'll be fresh baked goods. Oh, yum. 
Well, I'm going to head over to Ironforge because I need to go run a Nixia's Lair for that dragon mount that, that Allie has. <sighs> so... If- Frasley, if you need any tunes to run, like little tunes that can't defeat Ion, just let me know, as I already have that mount too. Okay, sounds good. Activating customized offer safe transporter. Well, I'm back in my home of Iron Forge until we one day reclaim Nomergon. <laughs> Let's look at what has been happening in the community. Awesome. Let's do that. The Con Before the Storm has surpassed 40000 in funding, with the campaign ending on June 15th. They've surpassed the $39,000 stretch goal of an expanded art gallery, and now it's time to take our shot at the $42,000 goal of a commemorative pint glass to all at the $35 tier and above. This is a final reminder that Recruiter Friend is going on a hiatus on June 11th. It will return, but we don't know what rewards will return or how it will look. And Mike Morheim, who I consider a friend to the whole community, is receiving the 2019 Honor Award at Game Lab Barcelona. This will take place on June 27th. From a press release from Game Lab, Game Lab's founder and director Ivan Fernandez Lobo stated that Mike Morheim is undoubtedly one of the most influential figures in the history of video games. Under his leadership, Blizzard Entertainment transformed the way we create and enjoy games, crafting experiences and interactive universes that will live forever. And are you looking to go back to nostalgia? Well, Wildhead is loaded in the classic Wildhead dungeon loot tables for NPCs into their database. This covers the major dungeon items, and you can help further increase this by running the Wildhead client and Wildhead looter to help keep the database running smoothly. And if you want to relive classic memories and, and you wish you had them in audio form, well, in this instance, you can, as the instance has released a zip file of episode 1 through 189 on their website. My good friend Silverbolt posted about two amazing chainmail banners by Sneath's Chainmail. They are 9 foot by 27 inches. There are 17,750 rings and 60 hours plus put into it. These look amazing, and they went on sale at the Lilac City Comic Con over the weekend, and if they don't get sold, they'll be on Sneath's Etsy. They are 895 apiece, or 1700 for both, so out of my price range. But these are incredible! The work, the materials and such, these are worth the cost. And showing, in addition to these banners, what an amazing community we have, Christy Golden had a Twitter thread asking for Warcraft characters as Disney characters. A Blizzney, if you will. Well, Elena wins in my opinion. They posted Sylvanas and Nathanos has Yzma and Kronk in the famous Pull the Lever, Kronk! And they followed up with Wrong Lever! Why do we even have that lever? I laughed and I loved it. And finally, Blizzard Entertainment brought in their summer apparel to the gear store, and they also launched a pride pin with the Blizzard Entertainment in Rainbow. The pin is 15, and proceeds through July 31st go to the Trevor Project, which is the world's largest suicide prevention and crisis intervention organization for LGBTQ young people. Well, this has been another episode of Frontalcast. So I was on an Epic Fail podcast with Draven last weekend. I had a blast as always with my good friend. You can hear all the hijinks on episode 191. And the title, yeah. <laughs> this gave us permission to use that title. And I teased a few episodes back about a special announcement. Well, I am excited to announce that Frontalcast is now available on Pandora's mobile apps in the podcast section. This will also be on desktop at some point in the future. And then in a surprise to me, we are also now on Radio.com, which, which I believe is run by CBS. So that would make it an amazing discovery. And then I noticed that Frontalcast isn't updating on iHeartRadio. I'm working on getting this resolved, so you probably can't hear this if you're using the app, but this should be fixed soon, maybe even by the time you hear this on Monday. In every episode, I like to take time to thank those people who have supported me financially for the show. Thank you to my Twitch subs out there. Thank you to Michael of the Blue Recluse, Nerd This Podcast, and also the Genome Project, where you can see us every Wednesday. Thank you to Dusty of Nerd This Podcast and YouTube Creators Hub Podcast, and he also does some kick-butt streams. Thank you to Naughty Grandpa. Thank you to Reserus. Thank you to Smasher Saurus. Thank you to Speaker for Dead. Thank you to Thorn of Lagging Balls and BNN. Thank you to Velicella. Thank you to the Zorts the Goblin. And thank you to Nihar. And thank you to Reserus and Velicella for the bits. If you want to support the show with a bit, tip, sub, or shirt, please go to support.gnomepodcast.com. All of these go to help supporting this labor of love. I do it for the community and I love doing it. Well, I am Frasley and you can find the show at gnomepodcast.com. Until next week, be awesome. And hopefully my cold goes away.
Blizzard seeks player input on how to handle board tensions. It's the Overly Dramatic News, I'm Hunts the Wind. With all the turmoil during the tumultuous reign of Garrosh Hellscreen as Warchief and the successful revolt that deposed him, members of the Horde could well be forgiven for wanting some peace and quiet. This being the world of Warcraft, that was, of course, impossible. First came defeating the Legion at the price of Vol'jin's life, then barely a moment after they said, how can we use all these frequent flyer miles we earned going to Argus and back, Sylvanas Windrunner invoked her powers as Warchief to launch a new war on the Alliance in an all-out battle for Azeroth. But many in the Horde were troubled at Windrunner's strategy. Ruthlessness is something the Horde can embrace. Dishonor, however, was a march too far for them. First Sourfang vanished with a price on his head. Then Bane disappeared with rumors that he was either killed or has been imprisoned somewhere for going against the Warchief. Who would be the next to say no more? Today, Blizzard, in an effort to maintain interest in an expansion growing longer in the tooth, announced a player poll to decide that very question. The potential objector has been a stalwart of the Horde, leading its foray into Stormsong Valley. But working with Lillian Voss on a recent mission for the Warchief has brought doubts to this hero. Will he join those who refuse to walk the path Sylvanas demands be taken? Vote now in the referendum known as Rexarit. Broadcasting across all Azeroth, I'm Hunts the Wind. Check out the archives at OverlyDramaticNews.com or follow me on Twitter at Hunts the Wind. Have you ever asked yourself what the world of Azeroth looks like from the perspective of a small village in Pandaria? Did you ever wonder what a weekly news show on a Pandaren college radio station would sound like? If not, well, that's probably a good thing, actually. But the creators of the Half Hill Report sure did. So each week, your host, Tosh Mafuni, that's me, brings you a short and very lighthearted view of the current goings-on in Azeroth as viewed by the only journalism major at Half Hill Agricultural College. So join us each week on the Half Hill Report as we share our small-town view of a very large world. Welcome to the Fraser Report, a short broadcast by me, the awesome gnome, about the world of Warcraft. The Glowcap Festival is tomorrow. We need to help the spoiling's great Glowcap fo shoe, yo! So I've been hearing whispers that a certain old god might be speaking to people with a certain gift. I've been trying to get information on what is being said. Hello, my sweet gnome. He did! You've never had a friend like me. <laughs> I swear, this studio is haunted, but I ain't afraid of no ghost. But you should be afraid of me. I'm just going to pretend I didn't just hear that. In a mounty mental change, Blizzard is adjusting how different races look on mounts. Gnomes can finally reach the range. Hooray! And Tarin will finally fit through certain doorways on their mounts. That part was always a headache on my Tarin alts. And riding along with the news, Pathfinder Part 2 now has an Explore Mechagon and Nashitar requirement in addition to getting the reps for those two zones. I'm looking forward to this in 8.2. It'll be one of the first things I do, and a benefit is I will get to visit Mechagon, which I was already planning to do first thing. And before I end this broadcast, I need to talk about a few classic things. The first trust test happened this past Wednesday. Many people were unable to get past the login queue, but for those who did, they came face to face with bosses like Ragnaros, Hogger, Omar the Paladin, Anixia, and others. Perfect Nomad showed me a tweet by Platinum that showed a bunch of gnomes running around. That is what the place looks like that all good gnomes go to once they die. Ooh, that place looks amazing. I'm finding it hard to believe I'm in heaven. There will be another stress test on May 29th. Blizzard has hinted that we may see more in-game hilarity like in the first stress test. And during this beta, a lot of things are being debated on whether they are bugs or not. Some of the recent examples include long quest objectives that don't have text wrapping, fall damage is equivalent to expected and verified values, broadcast text can be seen multiple times if multiple players interact with the same NPC, wanted signs do not have an exclamation point and are also not highlighted. I'm trying to remember if I ever did a wanted sign when I was a young lad. Maybe I overlooked them. Player characters do not animate when looting or interacting with quest objects. The example is collecting pumpkins. And gnomes and tarns are the correct size. Interesting. Have we gotten bigger or smaller since then? Hmm. And BFA WoW is looking at some possible changes. Blizzard, in a cost-cutting measure, is examining why all these class trainers are still around. They've been getting paid for doing nothing. This has been happening since Mr. Pandaria. Don't be surprised if you see them one day working elsewhere. No, 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 no. I don't mean working in the ESO expansion that just launched. And don't forget that Nomi is holding a chili cook-off on May 28th. 
Rumors are that entries will make you feel hot, hot, hot. Well, that whisper hasn't returned. That might be all my head. Well, I'm going to leave before it does return, if it is real. So until next time, be awesome. Frazzlecast is a fan podcast that covers Blizzard games. We are not affiliated with Blizzard Entertainment, Inc. Views expressed by the host and guests are their own. Some of the art, music, and sound effects come from Blizzard Games and are owned by Blizzard Entertainment, Inc. No copyright infringement is intended. This show is brought to you by Dragon Powered Studio. Find more at dragonpoweredstudio.com. Thank <laughs> you.